This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. So it's written on Beta Mikdash that it was above the place. In Beta Mikdash, when people came into the Beta Mikdash, into the Holy Temple, so when they were standing, they were touching each other. They were very, very close to each other. And when they were bowing to Hashem, an act that requires more space to bow, so then the place was expanding. Suddenly there was more place inside the temple. When they were catching more space, there was more space for them to bow. So the humility that they had while bowing to Hashem, to the Creator, gave more space. And Bet HaMikdash, that holy temple that we're waiting for it to be rebuilt, to come down from heaven, is the answer to all of our needs. And why? Because that it's above the place. Above the place means above physicality. To people like us, in every moment of our lives, we can hope for some kind of salvation. Today you can say, I need a house. Tomorrow you can say, I want to get married. And the day later you will say, I need more money. Every day I want to be healthy. Every day you need something. And you think that if you will receive that thing, you will be happy, you will find true happiness. But the truth is that even after that huge miracles took place in our lives, one second later we still found ourselves needing and hoping for the next salvation. So a complete salvation for us is not that one of our prayers will be answered, is only that we will experience complete salvation, complete redemption. Now, my problem with it is that I don't hear this voice in the air. I don't hear people talking about redemption. I hear people talking about troubles. I hear people talking about issues, their needs, their sorrow. And when you ask them, okay, what do you need? They say, I need Mashiach, we want redemption, we want Geulah. But the truth is that they're not really seeking for complete redemption, for complete Geulah. They imagine to themselves that when the complete redemption will come, all their needs will be answered as well. So they're calling it complete redemption. But the truth is that they just have an issue with the neighbors, they just have an issue with the plumber. They they need a temporary salvation because of their mindset. Their mindset, our mindset, is stuck in our daily difficulties and challenges. And because of that, we're not lifting our eyes above the surface, above the place, to yearn and to hope for Beit HaMikdash to rebuild. But that is the main thing that we need to hope for, is that Beta Mikdash will come back to us and nature won't be the strongest power that rules the world anymore. Because today, all of us, were walking like blind people in the middle of the night. We cannot see. Even if you think that you see, you don't really see. You never see a full picture of reality. You don't know. You don't know who is standing behind that wall. You don't know if it's a blessing or a curse. You don't know if it's a question mark or it's the answer to all your, all your doubts. You don't know what's going on. You think you know, oh, it's an amazing opportunity. You don't know. It might be the destruction of tomorrow. You, you don't know even what you want. Now, I see myself in this test 
all of the time, standing again and again. And like that the wind is changing and the weather is changing and the days are changing, the hours are changing and everything is changing. Also the mind and the thoughts of the person are changing all of the time, circling and moving and, 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 and we must always go back to ask ourselves, what's the purpose of my life? What is the meaning of my life? What am I doing here? Because even a person that is occupying himself, busy every day in serving the Creator, learning Torah and praying and doing it Bodhidut and trying to be a better person, working on his Midot, his behaviors, he will still find himself forgetting the purpose of his being on earth once in a while when he's hungry, when he's tired, when he's confused, when something just happened to him and distracted his thoughts and took him somewhere else. So we must keep reminding ourselves of the purpose of our lives. Now, I see that in my journey of, of of coming closer to the Creator, to the Truth, as much as I can, as much as I was able to in the last years of my tshuva, I saw that the highest thing that a person can do in his life is to save the life of other people. From what that I learned and been educated and felt also with my tools, I saw that the main guiding of the Creator to us is to help other people. And the biggest satisfaction also that you receive from Avodat Hashem, from serving the Creator, is when you help someone else, is when you give, is when you find yourself useful and helpful, that you helped someone, that you gave someone else an advice. And when we see that this is the biggest satisfaction that we're receiving from serving the Creator. From that we need to learn that this is the main thing that the Creator expects and wants from us. Now, let's say that the person will make a huge favor for you to you, he will help you, he will support you somehow, he will give you a hand somehow. You will always have that gratitude for that person. Always, you're going to remember, he's a good friend of mine, thank you, I remember that, I owe you, I'll try to, to pay you back, to also to be there for you when you'll need me. But if that person will do the same thing for your child, you will appreciate him much, much more. Because you will feel that he helped you to achieve something that is even no, and, and, and something, a, a cause that is even more noble than helping yourself, helping your children. To help your children is something that's more important to you than helping yourself. That's a, that, that's a normal and the sane way of thinking. You have a child, so he is more important to you than yourself. At least that's how it's supposed to be. Now for the Creator it's exactly the same. When we're serving Him and doing things for Him, so He's grateful, thank you. He's appreciating it, He can respect it, He can reward us for that, amazing. But when we're doing something for His children, now we accomplish something by that act of kindness that His gratitude for us will be much, much higher and greater. Because there is nothing in this world that will mean more for a person than his children. And from this world we should look and learn on the world that is above, on the spiritual world. This physical world is coming to teach us on the rules of the kingship of heaven, on how that Hashem sees the world. When you're working on yourself to clean yourself, to clean your eyes, to clean your heart, to purify yourself, so then 
by doing that, cleansing yourself, purifying yourself, you're finding yourself that you've been nullified to the Creator. Now the words that will come out from your mouth will be the words of Hashem. Like that the mouth of Moshe is not speaking words of Moshe. Moshe is telling Am Yisrael, Ki pi Hashem diber alechem. The mouth of Hashem was speaking to you through my mouth. Because I am not here. I couldn't care less. I'm working for someone else and I'm just telling you his will. The real righteous people are able to clean themselves completely from every kind of selfish will. And then the light of the Creator is shining through them out to the world. So from the world we can learn and see the real desire and holy will of the Creator. So when now when a person realizes the importance of his children, from that he can learn on how important the children of the Creator are for him. And now let's say that you need something for yourself and you're going and you go and ask from that rich person, you want to buy a house, you, wanna, you want to pay your rent. You go, you knock on the door of that generous person, you knock at his door, he's open, he's happy to see you. Okay, he's a real kind person. You tell him, hey, how are you doing? I'm sorry, can you please help me? I need to pay my rent. I don't know how to pay my rent. Can you help me with that? He's generous, he would love to help you. Let's say that he's just now We'll write a check, we'll, we'll, we'll count the amount that you need, we'll add a few more thousands and we'll set you free. Amazing, generous person. Think about his heart. Is he happy? Happy. Now knock at his door again and tell him, listen, my good sir, I came to tell you that your child is in need. He didn't want it to tell you, he doesn't know how to approach you, but your child, he needs help from you. How much gratitude that generous person will have for you. How much he gonna appreciate you for caring his children, thinking about his family. You came to me to ask for me? You didn't came to ask for yourself. You came to ask for my children? He will be so amazed. He will remember you for the rest of his life on wanting and hoping to be able to assist his children. Now when you're going to the Creator and ask for your needs, Usually the world are saying, and I'm going to argue with that as well, but the world will say that in heaven they're going to judge and measure if you're worthy or not, if you're supposed to receive or not, if it's good for you to receive or not. They're going to think if to give it to you or not. But when you will come and ask for a child of the Creator, no one can ask no questions about it anymore. This is a request that must be answered. No one can question about that because you're not asking for yourself. You're not saying, hey, I need a house. You say, look, your children, they are in need. This is why when we need to send a messenger to pray for us in public, that he will be the chazan, that he will be the shliach tzibur to stand and pray, we are looking for a person that he has family and he's got children and he's got business and that he, his feet are on the ground, that he's part of the community, that he's got money invested, that he's got children in the army, in the, in the, in the school, and the... You need someone with a heart, someone that will care, or else he cannot be the messenger of the public, because he needs to be related to them. So now when you go and you ask for the children of the Creator, you're asking also for yourself. And that's why also I said that I'm going to argue with the fact that you will think to yourself that they will ask on you if you're worthy or not. Because it all depends in your mindset. When you think that you're not worthy, it's because that you judge and measure yourself corresponding to your actions, to your deeds, to your height, to your abilities, to how early you woke up in the morning, to whatever. You're going to judge yourself with your bent and twisted eyes that are measuring amounts and sizes and weights. But the Creator, He is looking at every one of us with His eyes of mercy. And He doesn't judge us like we're judging ourselves. 
So when you're calling the Creator and asking for your own needs, you can also hold yourself as His child. And in that position, that's a prayer of that poor child that asks for mercy from his father. And no one's going to judge you before of helping you and assisting. And we must put that point deep, deep into our hearts. We are praying to someone that cares and I know. Look, I don't live in fairyland. I don't live over the rainbow. I live in reality. I know exactly how hard it is to pray and I know how many hours you stand and pray for something and I know how many months and sometimes years you can pray on the same thing and not to be answered. But it's not confusing me. It's not confusing me because I know that there are certain things in this lifetime that if your child is asking for those things, you cannot give it to him on the spot. It won't be good for him, even if it's the best thing in the world. Your child can tell you, my good father, my good mother, I want to learn all Shas. I want to learn all the Gemara. Tonight I'm starting. And you know that he needs to go tomorrow morning to school. Okay, so he's got that huge, amazing awakeness. And now he feels like being holy, being righteous. A child will come to you and tell you, Father, I want to do six hours in Bodedut. You're going to tell him no. You're going to tell him no, it's not for you. Six hours is but the dude. What's so wrong with that? You're still a child. I'm not talking about buying a bike or, or, or flying to the Far East or, or, or using drugs that you're for sure going to tell him no. We're talking about something good. He wants to stay all night and to learn Torah. No, not yet. Wait, let's see. Let's start with half an hour, and please tomorrow do it before you take a shower, and not on your bedtime. Let's start in the noontime if you're so anxious to learn. So great, let's do it together. Let's see, let's find the right time, the right spot for your learning. Even if you want to learn, there is a certain amount and a measure that will heal him, and will be good for him. And it's your responsibility as a parent, to guide him to walk in the right measure and with the right amounts and not to exaggerate and not to lose his mind. So also when we're going and asking for certain salvations and we want to say, but why? But how come? But what am I asking? Everyone else are married. Everyone else are working. Everyone else are paying their bills. Why am I the only one that didn't do this, didn't do that? All of those doubts that you have are coming from your low self-esteem. That you don't measure things right. That you don't check things all the way deep down into the roots of the truth of, of your situation in life, of your position, of where you really stand in life. For you, you remember the last three years of being alone. You remember that feeling of being embarrassed, of finding yourself, must say, I'm sorry, I'm not able to pay the rent this month. I don't know what to do. Have to go and ask for a loan. You remember the difficulties. You don't remember the benefits of those challenges that you experienced. You don't remember the humility that you received and your inner connection to the truth and to reality that you received from the difficulties, from the hardest hours that you experienced in your life. For me, those are the biggest tools, strongest, most powerful tools that I received ever from the Creator. Much stronger and useful than the blessed gifts of joy and satisfaction that I enjoyed from in my life. And I had many difficult hours and many amazing hours in my life. I was happy for hundreds of thousands of hours and I was sad and broken for thousands of hours. And I cannot tell you that the happy hours did more good to my life than the hard ones. I'm sorry to say, I'm much more sensitive and caring and loving and honorable and honoring and thinking and normal and sane because of the difficult hours that I've been through in my life. They woke me up from my illusions, from my dreams, 
from my sick, crazy fantasies of living my life in, in space, in a different world, in a world that doesn't have no roots, no connection to reality. The humiliations and the difficulties and the insultings and the rebukes helped me to stand stable on my feet and to be an honorable person, an honest person that can understand that there are other people in this world and not only Him, that people have their needs as well and that you need to consider them as well and you need to care about them and think about them and try to understand them and not to force your will on their will. Those things are so important. Those things are the foundation of every good thing in the world and you, can not, you cannot enjoy spiritual bounty, connection to the Creator, to the source of good, as long as your attributes, as your midot, are still broken. When you're still cruel, selfish, arrogant, don't care, angry, blaming everyone, criticizing everyone, hating everyone, despite everyone in your heart, hate them. Who are you? Evil. You become like, like Amman Rasha, like Pharaoh, like, like, like all the evil ones. You're not part of, of, of the holiness of the world. But when you're humble, when you have respect, when you care about other people, when you have a heart, but you find that your heart, you find that you have a heart only when it's broken. Only when it's being cut to, to pieces. Only when you are being disgraced, you realize the importance of, of honor, of respect, because of the humiliations that you go through in life. So many times in our lifetime, we're going through crisis. We're going through horrible hours and instead of blaming the Creator for not listening and accepting our prayers, we need to try to listen to the deep message, to the real benefit and use of those challenges that we're going through, of those humiliations, of those moments of despair. On Rabbi Nachman of Breslev it's written that he was finding himself in one of the darkest hours of his life. And from his darkness, suddenly he opened his eyes and he screamed, There is no despair in the world at all. One moment before he said that amazing quote, There is no despair in the world at all. One of the strongest sentences ever been said in this world. One moment before he said that, he was in the lowest moment of his life. He was so close to despair that we cannot imagine. That was his level. He was about to give up. And then he screamed because he realized that he must go out from his own darkness. So he screamed to Hashem, no, it can't be. It can't be that I'm going to give up. There's no despair in the world. If there is Hashem, there's no despair. If there is a Creator that can change the rules of nature, so there's no despair. Because if I won't give up, Hashem won't give up on me. And not to give up, it's not to give up on the mercy, on the loving kindness, on a supervision that is above nature. It's on the temple, on the holy third house of Hashem of the Creator, that will be a house of prayer to all nations. To all nations. You must understand we're talking about complete, complete redemption. Complete redemption above nature, above the place, above the rules that we are today running by. That we're so scared and afraid and terrified and worried. They don't know and confused and lost and must go and must run and we're late and what we're gonna do and we hope so and we wish and I need to and I hope and I. And you're not yourself because you're so terrified. When Mashiach will come, the end of troubles will come with him. The answer to all the questions. Faith will come and spread in the world in a way that people won't have doubts anymore. That it will be clear like the day that there is a creator, a supervisor that is supervising on every detail in your life. 
that you cannot pick the wrong apple in the grocery store. You must pick the apple that belongs to you in his spiritual and physical aspects. All of his particles, all of his fibers, all of his ingredients, all of his spiritual sparks were that he came from the water that were watering the ground, the farmer that was taking care of the tree, the truck driver that drove and took those boxes of apples, the people that were wrapping them and selling them online and whatever and you bought it in a certain day in a certain moment when you had certain thoughts in your mind and those thoughts came and all those details are written somewhere in the ancient archives of the Creator and he knows all the hidden wisdom all the hidden thoughts he holds it all in his mind in his greatness and it will all be revealed that there are no coincidences, that there are no accidents, that nothing can go wrong even when you feel that it's wrong, it's actually straightening you up. And like that it's written, the verse is saying, like that Jerusalem, the holy city is surrounded with mountain, mountains, that's how Hashem, the Creator, is surrounding His people. So when you want to go to Jerusalem, you want to visit the Western Wall, you want to pray in the place of Beit HaMikdash, when you drive to Jerusalem, it doesn't matter where you're coming to Jerusalem from. If you're coming from the Dead Sea, if you're coming from Tel Aviv, if you're coming from Bet Shemesh, if you're coming from the Moshavim, from the back, if you have all the options to come to Jerusalem, you must go through the mountains that surrounding Jerusalem. There is no other way. The tunnel that they built is going in the mountains. There are mountains. There is no way to get into Jerusalem and not crossing hundreds of mountains because mountains are surrounding Jerusalem like that the Creator is surrounding His people. So when you're looking around and you see around you thousands of up and downs it's the strongest evidence to the fact that Hashem is surrounding you. All your thousands of up and downs to the right, to the left, all your failures, all of your downs, all of your ups, all of your success, and then losing your connection. Now you want to go to, from Jerusalem to Tel Aviv. You say, okay, so I need to go in that direction. Only if you, you look at the map, it, it's, it's to go straight on that direction. When you're going to hit the road, you're going to turn to the left and then to the right. You're going to go up and then you're going to go down. And thousands of turnings you're going to find yourself in. Why? Because that's the way! And there's no other way! No, I want to go in the highway. Also in the highway. There are so many curves and so many circles and so many challenges that you need to go through and that's the right way when you want to accomplish something in Kedusha, especially in purity, when you have holy desires and holy goals. You must prepare yourself to those up and downs because that's the way. That's the way of those people that want to connect themselves to the truth. Why? Because if things will go smooth, you will not gonna find the truth in the end of your journey. Because we are too lazy. And we're not gonna seek for the truth if the truth will be revealed to us just like that. Only when we miss something, we put an effort to achieve that thing. Only if you tasted something that was so tasty, you can know how to appreciate it, only if you're going to lose it. If you're going to lose it and you're going to have that memory of tasting that sweet taste few months earlier, you will say, okay, so now I know what I'm after. Because you miss it. And that yearning, that desire to have it again is based on the fact that you taste it at least once. But only by searching and running and trying to, uh, to find it again and again and again and again, by that you will in the end find it and gonna know how to appreciate it. Because if you will just gonna have all your needs, you will forget that you received all those things from the Creator. You will think that you deserve it. You will think that you're worthy. You will think many, many thoughts that you still 
Those thoughts will show that you're still really not worthy. When a person is standing in a test, in a challenge, and he's failing in that challenge, the failure is sadness. The failure of a person is when he's falling to sadness. The main test is that we're not going to fall to sadness and despair, even though that we're facing very hard difficulties and challenges in our lives. That's the main challenge. To know that we must continue no matter how long it takes, no matter how hard it is, always just to keep on marching. If you lost a $5 bill, you will look for it for 10 minutes, for, for, for 15 minutes. If you lost a $100 bill, you're going to look for it for an hour, for two hours, maybe even for a few days, you're going to look, going to search for that $100 bill that you lost. A suitcase with $1,000, you're going to look for a few years, right? You're not going to forget about that suitcase so fast. And a million dollar, you're going to go to the grave after 120 looking for that $1 million. Why? Because it's a million dollars. You don't forget $1 million. When something is important to you, you don't easily forget about it. If to come closer to the truth, to the Creator, is an important thing, you will never gonna back off. Even if you're gonna hear a voice from heaven that will tell you you're not welcome in heaven, you're gonna hear a voice of the Shekhinah, Batkol, gonna say, everyone are welcome except of you, except of Elisha Acher. You will not gonna be rejected by that. There was a righteous man. His name was Rabbi Elisha ben Abuya. Rabbi Elisha ben Abuya was a very righteous man, a famous righteous man. He was the rabbi of Rabbi Meir Balanes. That righteous man did something wrong. And then he heard a voice from heaven that said that everyone else are welcome in heaven except of him, except of Elisha Acher. What did he do? He gave up. He said, okay, so now I'm going to sin. If I'm not welcome and my tshuva is not accepted, I'm going to go out. And then he went out and started violating Shabbos and did things that were not proper and, and, and decided to break the rules because he gave up. In a different place in the world, the Baal Shem Tov, Rabbi Israel ben Sarah, Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh, one time he made a decree that a woman that was not able to give birth at all, at all, at all not, he made a decree that she will have children. And after making that decree, they called him from heaven. And his soul went up to heaven and they told him, because that you made Hashem Barach put his, like he, he, the Creator already decided that, that woman won't have children. And you made that decree that she will have and the Creator cannot refuse to your request and she will have a child, but because that you made Hashem Barach do something against his first will, his first intention, you will pay and you will not going to have a share in the world to come. That was what the, the Baal Shem Tov heard, that he won't have a share in the world to come. When he woke up from that vision, he was happy. His daughter asked him, why are you so happy? So the Baal Shem Tov answered to her, until now, I had a huge evil inclination. The Yetzirah was always telling me that I'm righteous, that I'm holy, that I'm going to be rewarded in the world to come for saving so many lives, that I'm going to be so important and honored in the world to come. I had that evil inclination whispering that thing in my mind always. But now I'm free to serve the Creator with no reward. And he was so glad and happy that now he knew that he won't have a share in the world to come and now he can serve the Creator only for his will, only for his honor, with no desire for no respect, for no desire for no reward in the world to come. Now he was clean. He was so wise, he was so humble, that even when they crushed him from heaven, they rejected him from having eternal reward, inter eternal joy in the world to come. He took it with the best attitude in the world. 
He was so happy. He said, now I can serve Hashem l'shem shamayim only for His name, only for Him with no reward. And that's the right approach. If you're serving because you want to be answered, if you're serving because you want to have wonders, you want to have miracles, don't do that. It's a headache. Go to the beach. <laughs> Go do something fun with your life. You're not going to see the fruits like that. That's not the right path. That's not the right way. The right way is to throw yourself to the water, to the deepest water of them all, only for Him. Only for the real Him, for the real Creator. Not to justify your existence and not to fulfill your obligations and not to make people accept you or like you or respect you or promise you that you will have a world to come. You think that those people that are promising world to come to other people, they can promise world to come for themselves? Do you know people that know what happens in the world to come? They, they have moves over there in the divine world. No one knows anything. People are struggling. Big rabbis, famous rabbis, known rabbis don't have a clue about their spiritual condition. Don't know anything about themselves. If they hurt a fly, Rabbi Yudana, see that righteous man, one time he was a little bit cruel to an animal, to a calf. He was a little bit cruel to that animal. He suffered for 10 years, horrible pain in his teeth. For 10 years, until he got the message and he realized what was so wrong. And he revealed his mercy on a family of mice, of rats. And he told the maid not to kill them. Because he felt mercy for them. Only when he did that act of mercy on those poor animals, suddenly the pain that he had in his teeth for 10 years on being cruel to that animal, for that calf, for 10 years it disappeared. Because he hurt one time the emotions of an animal. And people today are running over each other and destroying each other and stealing from each other and lying to each other and betraying each other and stabbing each other in the back and talking Lashon Ara. I saw rabbis that are talking Lashon Ara in the mounds that it's scary. I saw rabbis that are talking Lashon Ara for hours, lecturing the whole long conversations, all Lashon Ara, talking Lashon Ara in public in front of thousands of people, Lashon Ara, Motzim Shemra, saying bad things on people. How can you do that? Based on rumors, based on things that they heard from, like destroying, destroying the, the rules of the Torah with no connection to, to, to holiness, to purity, don't have a heart to feel. And I'm not saying all rabbis, I'm not saying all, no, it's just, hey, we're in this world. It's this world, what can we do? In this world, people are not perfect. And even righteous people are not perfect. And even great, huge righteous people are not perfect, can fail. People are falling. If King David failed, if Abraham Avinu failed, if Moses failed, if Aaron failed, <laughs> someone is exempt from that. People like us, we failed thousands of times in our lifetime. We failed and we're failing and probably going to fail more and more. How can we stop it? We can hope, we can try, we can do the best that we can. We can hope, we can call Hashem, we can work on ourselves, we can do the best that we can. If you want to succeed, you must focus in reality. The reality is that there is a Creator to the universe. Connect yourself to Him. To Him. How are you going to connect yourself to Him? You need to listen to your neshama, to your soul. You must. You want a spiritual connection, right? Spiritual connection, you must be spiritual for that. How can you be spiritual if you're all physical? If you're always hungry and tired and angry and upset, how can you be spiritual? No spirituality in that zone. When you're angry and upset and terrified and worried, where is your spirit? Went out from the window. You must find a quiet place. You must learn how to breathe. You must learn how to relax. 
You must learn how to call the Creator and to ask from Him to supervise on you with His generosity, with His loving kindness, with His mercy, with His love. And to talk to Him and to beg and to tell Him, Hey, where am I? Where are you? What's going on? Let's be in touch. Please help me. Good morning, Hashem. Good evening, Hashem. How are you doing, Hashem? I'm fi looking for myself. I'm finding it hard to find. Don't know where I am. Where am I holding? A person can learn Torah and it will become a poison for him. A person can see a movie, a Hollywood movie, and will be the best cure for his spirit. And from the other side, the person watch a movie that destroys his life and learning Torah and finds inspiration. How are you going to know what to do with your life? You're going to try going to the cinema? You're going to try open? You don't know what to do. So you need to ask from the one that knows it all. So you need to have time for that. You must have a daily meeting with the Creator at least 20 minutes every day. 10, 20 minutes, 30 minutes every day of being alone with Him and talking to Him about your issues. I'm always angry, I'm always confused, I'm always terrified. Same things are coming again and again, like waves in the sea. I feel I'm drowning, I don't know what to do. Please Hashem, help me. I have such bad habits, I don't know what to do. And when I'm trying to stop, I'm falling to even worse places. So what's my solution? When I'm checking, I can't find no solution. I don't find no answer. But you know it all. You can find the answer for me. You for sure know what's the cure, what's the potion that can give me life, that can heal me. Please, what is my potion? What is my answer? From which book I should learn? Which rabbi I should follow? Which teacher I should listen to? Where's the place I should do my Ibodadut? In the house I cannot talk, on the porch. Buses and cars are driving all around in my car and my job and the hours and I'm tired and I'm hungry and I'm angry and I'm sad and please Hashem, can you help me? That conversation is an honest, sincere conversation that will attach you to the Creator because He is coming to the ones that are talking the truth. He's close to the ones that are saying the truth. When you will just be honest and say your truth. You don't need to memorize concepts in Kabbalah, Talmud Esra Sfirot, to bring Hashem close to your heart. You just need to be honest. It's in your mouth, it's in your heart to keep. To keep His will. So you need to ask Him, what is your will? I'm having issues, I'm having doubts. I have intersections in my life, I have doubts, I have options, I don't know how to choose. What is your will? Guide me to find your will. To find out what you want from me. What really you expect from me. I'm not like him, he's not like me, I'm not like her, she's not like me. We're different. I'm not able to wake up in that hour. I'm not able to make to the shul in that time. I'm not able to learn like him. I'm not able to do six hours in Bodhidut like this teacher, inspiring rabbi is talking about six hours all the time. I'm not able to do that. I'm getting in panic. I'm losing my mind. I'm getting ADD. I'm losing my temper. I'm, I'm nervous. I once did three hours in Bodhidut, lost my mind. Three weeks, I couldn't open my mouth after. It's not worth it. You need to check what's your balance. You need to walk in the path with faith. To believe that Hashem is with you when you are with Him means that even when you're trying, He's already there. Even if you're still walking in the valley of death, in the darkness, between the lions and the cheetahs and the, the leopards and the, the, the dark forces of your life, you still need to know that if you hope for Him, He's with you, protecting you, escorting you, surrounding you with love, <coughs> with an endless love, unlimited love, helping you to accomplish perfection in your life. To find the sparks that are needed for your completion. To become your true self. To find yourself. One needs to eat cereals in the morning. Another one needs to eat 
sandwiches in the morning. Someone else must eat vegetables. Someone else cannot put anything in his mouth except of Turkish coffee with no sugar, chas v'shalom. He cannot talk to him about it. He cannot. Someone else still needs to drink vodka in the morning. No, I'm not kidding. There are people that must drink alcohol and there are people that must consume drugs. You, no, drugs not good for you. Drugs not good for you. I hear you. I hear you. For me, if I'm not taking, I'm dead. Someone will tell you. I have students that cannot fall asleep without using drugs. And I'm not saying use drugs. No. But I know him. He's got nightmares. He cannot close his eyes. You know what he'd been through in his childhood? How many times he'd been molested? How many times he'd been destroyed? He cannot function. You're talking to a dead person. Tell him not taking drugs. Oh, give him a gun. Shoot him in the head and get over with it. That's it. You, what, what do you mean no drugs? You can say whatever you want. You know, oh, drugs, not good for you. No, drugs. You don't know anything. Yes, drugs. For him it's drugs, for another person it's movies, for another person it's Facebook. And you don't know. People cannot go to sleep at night, people cannot breathe, people cannot eat, people cannot talk, people cannot go out from their houses. People are terrified, people been hurt. And the Creator, He knows it all, and He sees it all, and He cares about you so much, that He can forgive you. People cannot forgive you. Why? Because they never realized that they're not forgiving themselves yet. And you know why? Because they have not completed their tshuva. That <coughs> is the reason why they cannot forgive themselves. Because they still have not been forgiven in heaven. Hashem really have not forgiven them. That's why they cannot forgive themselves. That's why they cannot forgive you and going and killing people in the streets. Because Hashem is upset with them and they live their life under judgments. Because there are judgments above their heads. And that's why they're criticizing everyone because this is their own condition. Now when you're starting your real tshuva process and you're just looking for the mercy of Hashem and you're a humble person and you say to Hashem, I know I'm not worthy and I want to do tshuva, immediately your tshuva being accepted and that's why you can find the lifeline in the middle of the darkness because Hashem is shining upon you in the worst place in hell and you've been forgiven and been purified. And you walk in darkness, but your light is shining all over the place. And if you will look with eyes of truth in your reality, you will understand that grace and kindness and love and light and happiness is surrounding you from every direction. How many wonderful things you made in life. How many miracles you saw and experienced in life. How many times you saw the Creator helping you and giving a hand. How many beautiful things you noticed in this world. How many prayers been accepted. Even though that other have not been accepted yet. But how many did. And if you will check how many hours you learned Torah. And how many understanding, deep understandings you have about yourself. And how much you developed in the last five years or in the last 20 years. You're not the same person you were. You're a different person today. Why? Because you've been forgiven. Because you've been accepted. So we need to work on that to accept ourselves. To let the kindness of the Creator lead us to the redemption. To above physicality. To above the place. To above nature. To a place that nature cannot control and limit our lives. That nature is a tool in the hand of heaven. And not above and stronger than heaven. We need to put that understanding deep in our hearts. And with that faith to go and pray. With that faith to go and convince other people to believe. To believe in themselves. To believe that they are gorgeous. That they are amazing. That they are beautiful. No matter what they do, no matter what they've been through, it's nothing. It's nothing. Hashem is not angry. 
people that haven't done tshuva are angry because they're under anger because they haven't realized how kind and good Hashem is but when you realize that Hashem is kind and His kind kindness is surrounding Him so the world becomes a better place okay thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you just for you to know the Amuna project is a non-profit organization and we're working for no one we're just doing it for the fun we love our job <laughs> we're very happy to save lives of people and you're welcome to join us and to support us in our amazing fantastic activities around the world saving lives of people changing lives of people someone gave me the most amazing compliment two days ago I received that message I think you're the only honest person I met in my life that's a nice compliment right <laughs> I liked it so thank you and thank everyone else thank you we hope you enjoyed this video very much please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world for more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always, and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.